the Joe Rogan experience. Are you, you're aware of uh, Elon Musk's neural link sure. technology. Yeah, yeah. How much do you know about it? I know a decent amount. And my friend uh, Brian Johnson, he has a company, Kernel. There's a few different companies that are trying to think about these brain-machine interfaces. And what are they trying to do? Basically, what they're trying to do is to find a way to connect our brains to our machines. And there's a little bit of, of progress. Our brains are... They're incredibly complicated and they're messy. I mean, it, they're, there's a lot that's, that, that, that's happening. But we are increasingly figuring out how to connect our brains um, to our, our technology. And so people are imagining a time when we can do things like download uh, download memories, download ideas, or upload memories and upload ideas. And there's some very early science that is suggesting that this will be possible, but it's, it's still the very early days. The very early days. But Elon was giving the impression that sometime this year they're going to release something. You know, they may release something, but it's not going to be something that's going to change the world because this, this, that technology is way more nascent than even the genetics technology that, I'm, that I've been talking about. So it's not like that, there's, that, that it's at all remotely possible that this year you're going to be able to like upload a full memory or download a full memory. But there, there are little things that are, are happening, but every, every journey begins with a step. But the uh, technology is fairly transparent as ter in terms of like where the state of the art is right now? Now? It is in that it's extremely early. This stuff is so. When you think of like about systems that we understand, mm -hmm. I mentioned that we you know we understand just a little bit about genomics. Um, we know less about the brain. The brain is kind of the great unknown of this universe. We know more about the oceans than we know about our brain. I mean, it's just we know very, very little. We understand that if you kind of stick an electric current in somebody's brain, like that's going to, if you kind of shoot a spike through somebody's head, but really understanding how the brain functions, it, we're still in the very, very early days. So do you think that Kurzweil's off with this idea that you're going to be able to download your consciousness into a computer? Because that's one of the yeah. most controversial yeah. ideas that he's come up with, so right? I think he's, I think he's off um, based on your use of the word your. So I mentioned mm. that a month ago I was in Kyoto uh, and I, I was at this, um, at this stem cell lab, but I also went to another lab of a guy named Hiroshi Ishiguro, who's the world's leading humanoid roboticist. And so he's the guy who was on the cover of Wired and he's created these robot avatars. And like I had a conversation with this, this robot woman, Erica. And it was really interesting because I could see uh, that like if I would smile, She'd smile and lean forward. And if I had like a, you know, over-exaggerated sad face, she'd like change her expression. And she can have like, you know, basic, basic conversations. Wow. But we're still a long way. And so from, from having full robotics, but I, I had this uh, full robotic human interactions, but I had this, this debate um, with Ishiguro. And he was saying that he thought that the future of humanity was non-biological, that we were going to kind of unload ourselves um, to these non-biological entities, and that is how we would gain our immortality. And I, my, I argued something very different. I feel like we are biological beings. I think we'll fully integrate with our technology, but if we ever become entirely non-biological, then that's not us. Either right. we will have com committed suicide as a species, or these... Um, robots or that will have killed us because even if let's just say that I could download my entire consciousness to some kind of robot and let's just say that was possible that robot would be me for that first exact moment when the transfer happened but then beyond that they wouldn't be me anymore because right. there would be a whole other set of, of experience but we're but certainly our interaction, our connectivity with this tech is going to be greater. And so even if Kurzweil isn't exactly right, he's directionally right. Yeah, the problem would be that you would be locked in. Like, if they downloaded your consciousness into some sort of a, a bank of computers somewhere, right. where are you? If that's your yeah. consciousness, your consciousness yeah. is in these ones and zeros? Yeah. And you're, you, I mean, how... That's terrifying. The, yeah. What's terrifying is if somebody yeah. didn't like you, and they said, I'm going to make one version of you suffer for all eternity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to just here, download I, I, you I, while you sleep. And, it's true. But I have something worse than that. Okay. Death. And so I think that nobody mm. is going to say, well, I'm going to be Joe living a life, or I'm going to like not be Joe, and I'll just have my consciousness downloaded someplace else. And so if the comparison is, well, I've lived this life, and I don't want to die. And so I'd rather kind of be 
here in some kind of version, and even if it's not me, mm. just something. Really? I, I think some people will want that. Not I everybody. I think some people will, but they don't know what they're getting, right? Yes. In terms of you don't yeah. know what that experience is going to be like, yeah. nor do you know if there is some sort of a chemical gateway that happens yes. in the mind when yeah. you do expire and allows you to pass through to the other dimension that yeah. your your consciousness and your soul well, longs I, to travel to. But no, you've I hope I hope you're right it. about that. Am I? I'm <laughs> definitely not right. Yeah, I've written about this in my novel. It's like yeah, but I think kind of when you're dead, you're just dead. And the Why good do news you think for you that, is though. Well, just because I think that you, this kind of immortality comes because time stops. Time is this relative concept, and so mm-hmm. at the moment that you die, that's immortality for you because time stops flowing for you. Time is, that's what Einstein taught us. Time is this relative concept. Other people very legitimately, and there's no way to prove it, feel that we have this soul and this soul can travel to other mm. other dimensions. I happen to believe that we are biological beings and our experience of the soul, whatever is connected to our biology. When our biology stops functioning, those experiences, whatever they are, stop being accessible, at least to us. 